Today at shopdapp.com, we're going over OBD11 apps. All right, so let's talk about OBD11 apps. Uh, we've put out a lot of information around OBD11 stuff, and we've shown different apps and how they work. Uh, since then, we've had a lot of people who purchase OBD11s and are looking to do a specific app that we've covered, and they say it's not available for their car. So, uh, because essentially apps are a, a script that is created by OBD11 to make coding of specific things easier for you as the vehicle owner. Uh, it gives you the ability to have that one-touch coding feature as opposed to going through each individual channel uh, to change all the different values. Uh, the alternative obviously is doing that, changing in the, the, each individual values, and it's gonna vary by model, and so which is why apps don't cross over from one platform to another because uh, every model has different options and settings and equipment, and so uh, one app does not equal another app. Uh, essentially what an app does is it is a script that is programmed to change X value to Y. So, um, so for example, you have Mark 7s and you have two options. You can either use an OBD11 app where you would go in and go into your, go into your Mark 7 model. Okay, so we can go in and actually select our remote windows function and then you would be able to change your value to on and off and then select your app. The alternative to this is to code it manually. And so we have a write-up that we did a long time ago that was uh, shown to VADCOM coding, which would be the same thing as OBD11. You could do the same manual coding that you can with VADCOM. And we'll just give you a little bit of a brief overview of the screenshots here. And as you can see, when you scroll through these screenshots, there's a lot of things that you need to change to actually make that happen. So that is basically, when you use an app, it's a programmed version of that to make your life as uh, the end user easier. The problem with that is, again, because it's model specific, it's not gonna be available for every single model. So, what you can do is one of two things. If you have an app you're looking for that you know exists um, for a model, you can either reach out to OBD11, ask them about a, a different model. Um, but before you do that, what you should do is always check to see if your model has the app that you're looking for available. So how do you do that? Now, you can do that without even purchasing an OBD11, and here's how. When you go to the home screen on OBD11, if you don't have to pay for the app, this is before you purchase it, uh, assuming you don't already have one, and you can go in and go to the top corner here, and you can go to Garage. And when you go to Garage, on the bottom right, obviously on ours, we have gone through a bunch of different models, but if you go to the bottom right, there's a plus mark to add a model. And if you go here, you have Audi, a Volkswagen, and obviously say out in Skoda, but let's say we select Volkswagen. So you can select your model here as you take a look here, and you can select your model, let's say we're looking for a Mark 6 Jetta 2010 plus. So you go in there. Once we get into here, it's gonna show us all the apps. Uh, you select apps. It's gonna show you all the apps available for a Mark 6 Jetta. Now, this is how you're gonna know what's available for your car. Some of them have a lot of apps. Mark 6 Jetta only has uh, around six. So some of them have six, a Mark 7 GTI has a ton because uh, that is the most common ones uh, for uh, OBD11 because it's a very popular model relative to uh, these other models as far as coding is concerned. So some models like uh, some Audis only have a few different apps. Some of them only have one. If you go to, you know, let's say an Audi R8, you might only see a uh, service reset light, which is useful for somebody who has an R8 who might get charged a hundred bucks uh, for the dealer to reset their service light if they do their own maintenance work. Okay, then let's get into uh, apps and credits. So if, when you use the app, what you're paying for is going to be a one-time use. Um, so every time you use an app, it's going to actually require credits. Why is it set up that way? I don't know, my assumption is, and keep in mind, we are not OBD11, we are the US distributor, but we don't have any control, control over the credits. Uh, we don't we don't receive anything for the credits. All that stuff goes directly to OB11. We have absolutely nothing to do with that at all. So we don't have the ability to give people credits back or refund them. That has to all be done by OB11. So um, anything related to that stuff, that's something that they have to handle and we don't have any ability to uh, control. But when it comes to apps, part of the reason why they do that, I assume is because the only way they can actually uh, give you the ability to they don't have an unlock feature for an app, so 
they just charge accordingly uh, for the one use back and forth. You know, obviously they will, it will cost you credits if you try to use the same app more than one time. Um, the other thing about apps that I think is a common, uh, a common misconception that because you're getting the one touch coding feature that OBD11 offers, the benefit, the, the challenges around that are the fact that one touch coding automatically activates it. And the problem with that is a lot of times, for example, in the one touch coding for the windows, there is a, you have to, once you perform the app, you actually have to go into the instrument cluster or sometimes an MFD, depending on model, um, and activate whatever is required for convenience windows. So there's actually a checkbox you go into in a radio for the Mark 7 specifically that you would check a box to give you the ability to activate that feature. And that's gonna be true for a lot of those type of things that you're gonna do on OBD11 that app coding is going to do, which is why a lot of times people, they pay for an app and then they think, oh, it didn't do anything. It's not that it didn't do anything, it did exactly what it was supposed to do. If it says it accepted it, then it actually accepted it and changed everything. The problem is it hasn't been activated in the car. So a lot of times the apps actually unlock a feature in your car and then you have to then go into your car and activate it. So um, hopefully that clarifies and touches on some of the points uh, that are important for using apps for OBD11. Um, again, any other questions you have, be sure to leave in the comments below. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it.